Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. A little while ago I made this little tap handle as a nod to the Starrett version that most of us have seen before. But it looks lonely, and I haven't seen anyone tackle a die holder in the same style. It's a bit more complicated, but I think with a bit of effort we can make a pretty slick die handle. If that sounds like something you're into, hang around to see how this one turns out. Now for this project, I'll be following a lot of similar processes to the tap handle, so if there's anything I've missed, be sure to check that one out. I'll link it above and in the description below. But basically, we'll kick this one off with the threaded clamping action part. I'm not going to spend all day talking up the tools I've made, but that knurling tool is pretty damn nice. I'm going to start with the screw part of the handle because I'm definitely not at a stage where I can internal single point of thread that small. I'll have to use a tap. But if I make the female part first, when it comes to single point the threads on the main body, I'll be able to use the cap to test fit and get them just right. Nothing groundbreaking here, just the knurl, a turned down little section at the front of the handle for aesthetics, and I can drill and tap for M12. Then I can get it parted off and put aside for the minute while we work on the main body of the handle. We are going to be turning a lot of this bar into chips today, and it doesn't quite fit into the spindle bar on my machine, but I'll carefully centre drill and start whittling down one of the handles. I am going all the way from 40mm to 12 on this one. So I'll just line up a good podcast and get to working it down. When I've got it down to 12mm, I'll switch over to a button insert and just face in to give me a nice little radius transition on the end. Now for the main thread, I'll cut a little runoff gutter to thread into, break all the corners and get this thread cut. And I uh, apparently forgot to turn the camera on till I was about done, but nothing particularly eventful happened there. With that out of the way, it's time to work on the bore that will go all the way through the end of this handle. And that's a deep old hole. I need to make it all the way into the centre portion that will get milled out for the die. I do have a pretty big window, but I do really need to make sure it's deep enough. I don't want to come back and try and make this deeper. Smoky. Then I'll give it a ream to get it right on size for the locking pin we'll make a little later, and this side is good to go for now. So I can flip it in the chuck and kind of tap it true. I'm not trying to dial it into zero, I'm not too worried about concentricity between the handles, just enough so nothing will look wonky later on. Then face, centre drill, and get to repeating the whittling process on the other end of the bar. I'm keeping this end a bit thicker than the other end. I will be turning this handle into a taper a bit later on, but for now, I want to keep it level for work holding when we make it to the mill. So now that I'm down to 16mm, I'll drop a matching radius to the other end of the handle and this can head over to the mill. Now 
And that is an odd shaped looking doohickey. And there's still a lot of steel in our way to our finished shape. So out comes the rougher to rip off the excess material. Then I can switch over to carbide and try and clean it up a little. Now I want to locate center and get this drilled. This hole is going to be pretty important to me. It's going to give me a center point that I'll use shortly to center on the rotary table. It's also going to give me a reference that when I flip the part over, it's going to make sure the hole is square. So I can flip it, use the reamer to make sure I'm all lined up, and repeat the material removal on the other side. Alright, we are getting closer, but it's time to bust out the rotary table and get it dialed in. I didn't want to bore everyone with making these little parts, but I did whip up a couple of custom fixtures for this job. This is a central spigot that matches the reamed hole that we just punched through the center, and should give us a good zero point access to rotate around. And then I made a couple of little split clamping blocks. It's just a piece of aluminium turned out to a matching diameter, with a 12mm hole in one, and 16 in the other to match the diameter of each handle. Then some flats to clamp against, and a little slit to let these clamp. In theory, when I clamp down from the top, they should compress just enough to hold everything down rock solid. Well, that's the theory anyway. Let's see if it works. I'll start by breaking the hard corner with a rougher to get it roundish. And now, before I get too deep into this bit, I will say I did make a mistake when calculating the diameter of the circle I needed here. Hence the little spot that's not milled all the way. But I will come back for it, I promise. And you'd think I did it so much that I planned it that way. But somehow, I managed to park the clamp in front of the camera every time I stopped the rotary table. Then a little clean up with a regular four flute, and it's onto the center hole. Now this is where the die is going to live, so I need this to be pretty bang on. I use 25mm or 1 inch dies mostly, so I'll just rough out the majority and come back to clean it up right on size. Then a little lead in chamfer, and I can double check my fit. Perfect. But I'm not happy with my extreme out of roundness. So I'll refixture it and buzz over it with some carbide to make it more rounder. -er. And the bad luck from the camera gods managed to follow me back to the lathe apparently. This is where I turned down the other handle into a taper, but the whole thing is shockingly out of focus. Nothing crazy exciting, but still a miss on my part nonetheless. 
Just a 2mm drop from the thick end to the thin end of the handle, blending into the radius against the centre circle. Then it can get scotch brided and parted off. Now I'm not brave enough to go all the way hanging all the way out here, but I'll just get it close and break it off at the nub. I don't need to be breaking more inserts after the last video. To give it a little style, I'll punch in with a radius form tool to clean everything up and that's the main body of the holder done. And now just to clean up all the odds and ends, starting with the knurled cap. It can get the same treatment from the form tool so the two ends of the handles match. Then flip it over and ream a little short section to 12mm so it slides over the body of the handle just right. And now it's onto the locking pin. I've got a little piece of 1045 that I'll turn down to about 10 mil or so. So the head of the pin will clear the threads inside the cap and then turn down the main shaft to the eight mil to match the reamed hole we drilled back near the start of the project. And that fits pretty nice. Then I'll part it off, flip it in the chuck and break the hard corners. Then another flip and I can get set up to put a point on this thing. That is, after I turn down this centre draw mark. Now the dies I use seem to have about a 90 degree dimple in them, so I'll set the compound for 45 degrees to give me a 90 degree included angle. Come on mate, that's the wrong way. There you go. With the lathe in reverse, I'll just whittle off some material until it looks good and pointy. And that looks sharp enough that it could hurt me. So off to the forge we go. Something I do want to go over a little more in depth today is heat treating. It's something that seems to scare a lot of people out there, but it's a pretty simple process. I do have a kiln in the correct heat treating gear here, but to be honest, while it's really precise, it's a lot slower and there's a bit more cleanup. So let's look at the quick and dirty version. I get that not everyone has a forge, but it's just a heat source. It will do the same thing as an oxy torch or even map gas if that's what you have. It'll just take longer. I'll cycle the part in and out and touch it against a magnet until it's non-magnetic. Now I'm not really trying to heat the whole part, I only really need the tip to be hardened. And this is an advantage of using a heat source like this rather than a kiln, is that I can localise the heat to one point. Now we are looking for a dull red colour. It is a bit hard to see in these lights, but if you have a magnet handy and just keep touching against it until the part stops sticking, you're close enough. Well, ideally you want to be a pinch over non-magnetic, but we're not building rocket ships here. Well not today. When you get to temp, into your quenching medium it goes. Now something I do see people do a lot is swell the part around, and personally, it freaks me out a bit. The sideways movement can increase your chances of warping your part, so just move it straight up and down to break all the bubbles and keep your quenching medium in contact with the part. How did we do? Perfect. 
Nice and hard at the tip, but still soft in the middle and at the other end. And it's as straight as an arrow. No warps, still a really nice sliding fit. So now for a quick temper. I'll hold the tip of the pin away from the heat source and try to heat the shank. Again, I'm only really worried about the temper right at the end of the part, so I'll heat it until the colours creep up to the point. Something in the light brown spectrum will be just fine for what we're doing. But blue? Blue is no bueno at the tip. That will be way too soft. And I did go a pinch over. It's a little darker brown than I needed, but not blue. And again, this is supposed to be a quick down and dirty setup. I'll repeat the temper a couple more times off camera to make sure it's all the way through the part. And that's our down and dirty heat treat recipe. And it's time to bring this whole project home. I got a bit lazy here. It had been a long week. I knew I needed to make a spring, but I didn't want to fuss about with the change gears on the lathe. So I'll just kind of wind it by hand. I only need about four revolutions, so that'll do. Then a little clean up on the grinder and this thing can go together. Nice, straight in the T-slot. Nothing hard here, just a spring on the locking pin and into the central bore it goes. Then the handle can screw on. But before putting the die in, you can see the edge of the reamed hole through the centre of the part across the bottom of the die area. And this isn't an oversight. My dies seem to have a little dimple about half a mil off centre towards the face of the die. And it also encourages the die to be pushed into the back face, holding it down nice and tight. And there it is. That's not going anywhere. But let's see how it works. It's not one of my videos if I don't make something look really, really hard. Focus. Focus. And there we go. It works a treat. This thing is far from perfect, and even with my double take on the perimeter circle, it's still got a little wobble. But it still feels like a good quality tool, and matches my tap handle perfectly. It was something new for me and it was pretty fun using the rotary table a bit more. I hope to be using a bit more in upcoming videos. Thanks for hanging around everyone. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one!